What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the How to Husband Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Duran. I got both of my co-hosts on the line with me tonight. I got my man, Jay, in the building. What's good, bro? Not much, man. Always looking forward to chopping up with you fellas, man. Hope everybody enjoyed that weekend. But want to quickly remind you, you can catch us on YouTube as well as follow us on TikTok at Hold Us and Podcast. And for those interested in promos or shout outs, you can shoot us a DM on IG at Hold Us and Podcast as well as email us at Hold Us and Podcast at gmail.com. All right, T. I uh, also got my man SD in the building. What's good with you? Nothing, man. I'm excited about this here episode, ready to get it going. First, I want to give a shout out to um, Brother Soul Productions for always keeping the background audio fresh. And I want to remind you all to donate to the Hold a Husband podcast on Cash App and PayPal. All right, T. Uh, I want to remind everybody that y'all can catch the audio playback of the podcast every Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on thecore94.com. Tonight's episode is titled Work to Do. Uh, We're going to be discussing what needs to be done to improve the state of dating overall um, to ensure that we can start to have some more healthy relationships. Uh, But y'all know how we do around here, man. We like to discuss stuff that we've seen trending or on our timelines. Uh, So we got a couple interesting things to discuss this week. Um, This first video uh, is a post that we that I saw um, in regards to single parenting. Uh, where a mother was criticizing uh, how her dad was, how the dad wanted to discipline his son. Let's take a look. How come it's a problem every time he go with you somewhere? What, what's going on? It's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come hold on. on. Hold on. It's not a problem. Every time he come with me and I chastise him about something, he want to get in his feelings and shoot you a text message. Somebody okay. want to go back home. All right. But the thing is, you run your house like a boot camp. That's why your other kids ain't happy there. No, I run, not used no, to that. I run my house with structure and discipline. That's what I run my household with. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that you're not doing a good job of that, but that's what I run my house with. And when he getting his feelings, he want to come home because I chastise him. Right. We don't, but he don't do that there. I I do everything here. I clean his room. I do the dishes. I clean up. He don't do that. That's man, why he don't ever want to be there. He don't want to be at your house because you run that shit like a fucking boot camp, you, you man. Can't be serious. You, gonna, you how you gonna raise a young man like that? I'm raising him. I'm turning him to be out to be gay. That's not what I'm saying. See, you 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 trying to paint, change the whole narrative. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about me disciplining my son and you not being an interference. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, look though, that's not how I discipline though. He could be whatever too hard. No, he, he could be. We going He could be whatever he want to be. Let's mm-hmm. get that straight. Okay. He but you too he hard on him. You too hard on him. I'm supposed to be hard on him. That's wrong with these kids. Y'all you think your other kids don't want to come? You too hard on them, man. That that's too much. Let them be a kid. <laughs> So I got to be the fall guy because I want to be hard on my kids to make sure they turn out right. Better than I did. Look, it's, come it's, on. That, that's a, come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Get out the car. Oh, my gosh, come man. That, that, that's the whole thing. Come on. Come on. Really, no, no, son? No, no. Come on. Mama, take care of you. I'll take you shopping later on, okay? See what I'm talking about? That's the type of shit I'm talking about. Man, that's it's sad to watch. Uh, and, and this is just an, another example of why it's so important to decide who you have children by. Um, because you can be a solid dad. You can do what you, what you feel is necessary. And there can be a woman that undermines, you know, a man trying to raise his son to be a man because of her feelings or how she thinks things should be. Um, so for her to just, I'm going to take you shopping later, like, oh, man, that, that irked the hell out of me. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with baby mama drama like that. Hey, man, I'm so glad, too. And I got a kid. It'll be 11 this year. And, um, man, you know, stuff like this, what these here women don't understand is they are crippling these boys out here. They turning them into the very men that they refuse to date out here. That's what they doing because they're coddling them. They babying them. They don't have any structure and discipline. But then when they get older, they want men who have structure and discipline and, and prioritize things well. Well, studies have shown that mothers by themselves create the worst boys and men out here statistically, be it drug abusers, they in jail, more felons, um, domestic abusers, dropouts, gang members, across all the board. of that type of stuff. Across the board, yep. 70 plus percent of these here people are raised by just a mom for, for reasons just like this. And it's sad to see because it's a dad there that's trying to instill structure and discipline. Like he said, my house has structure and discipline. And nine times out of 10, 
when when kids go to two separate how two separate homes like that they're gonna want to be in the easier easiest home with one the mom that yep. don't discipline them like that <clears throat> that don't structure things for them like that that let them pretty much do whatever it is they want to do and that's a horrible horrible way to raise a boy because when he grows into a man she gonna wish that she let him go with his dad more especially when he stopped listening to her like that because he gonna be bigger than her that's the way it typically goes with boys like that True. and um she disrespecting the dad she's undermining and, and and disrespecting the dad in front of the kids come on in here i'm gonna take you shopping lady you run your house like a boot camp and and the kids hear this they hear that that's why your kids don't like you course. that's why the kids yeah. don't like you but like, other kids yeah. don't want to see you yeah like it, it just undermines his 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 authority as the man but a lot of women feel like hey this is my child instead of our child that's why that's why like you said it's important mm. to to pick somebody good that you have a, a child with man like like real quick this last example my son's mom sure. anytime my son do anything she'll call me and it's rare that he does anything but she'll call me to say how you think we should handle this and then i'll say let me take care of it i'll handle it over here and she say okay you the man you know how to deal with you know boys and stuff like that and it's cool that's that's that that's that respect Smart. factor yeah like yeah. This it shows trust yeah Absolutely. what'd you think jay hey i'm with you glad i don't have to deal with this now, I don't have children yet, but I should say this. One of the most important decisions a man's going to make in his life is who he chooses to have his children and who he chooses to procreate with. And I think, you know, and let's just say it doesn't work out for whatever reasons, right? I think it's in everybody's best interest and the kids are better served when both parents are on the same page. SD, you just gave a great example there when you two can co-parent co and you guys are on the same page. It's, uh, yeah, you discipline your son and she's going behind your back. Uh, don't don't listen to your yep. father. I'm just gonna nope. take you. Because when he's doing that, you're enabling you're enabling bad behavior. You're saying what he's doing is okay, and he's just gonna do it even more. And and that mentality that she 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 displayed is is one of the major problems in our culture in the black community. She wants to be liked by her son. That's why mm -hmm. the kids don't like you. That's why they don't want to. He's not your friend. Your kids don't have to like you. To, they need to respect you and they need to listen to your guidance. Like, it, it annoys me, like, because when I was a teacher, these are the type of parents that be the most problematic. Like, I, I remember kids would just do something, get suspended. They they parent moms like this, take them, bomb some Jordans. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they reward bad behavior just like she, she did in the video. And, and it's, it creates such a negative cycle because now the son is going, if he can just secretly text his mom and he can get out of any bad situation with his dad, there's no yeah. accountability. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's only a limited amount of time he's going to be driving or, you know what I'm saying, or doing his own thing pretty yeah. soon. But you know where this comes up, the biggest the biggest reason it's, it's a problem? Because all these six-figure jobs that women want men to have require them to have discipline require mm -hmm. them to do stuff yeah. that they don't want to do require them to be in situations yeah. that they may not prefer to be in so mm -hmm. all these things that they, they request and they want out of men they sabotage themselves with mentalities like this yeah man let me give you a personal thing that just happened to me last week something kind of along these lines with, with my son's mom and i'm gonna tie this here in in a minute but um i called my son he was with his mom and i said man i called you man what happened Oh, I said, he said, I ain't have my tablet. I can't get my tablet during the week. You know, I can only get it on the weekend. I said, man. And I was on speaker. His mom was right there. I said, man, man, she running that place like a game warden over there. And and I was joking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was, I was joking with my boy. Like, he didn't know what it was, but I'm joking with him. And so then when we got off the phone, she called me. She was like, man, you know, I ain't like that when you was, you know, when you was messing with him like that. Very respectful, though. And she said, yeah, you know, I ain't like that because it make him like, feel a certain type of way just being. And I was just joking. And you know what? I said, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't. I wouldn't mean none by it. I'm sorry. And I say that to say that, you know, she comes at me you know, um, or deals with me with respect because I treat her with respect. And in this particular video, I didn't I didn't hear this man be disrespectful to her at all. This dude was respectful to her 
and she was still disrespecting him and undermining him as a man and that's the sad part about it because he seemed like he a solid dude because not only is he taking his kid or kids spending time with him he's trying to instill structure and discipline in them and on top of that he's dealing with the mom with respect from what we saw and yet that 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 type of man is being undermined and disrespected in front of his kids as if he's a deadbeat and that's something or he for doing me something wrong yeah that's yeah and that's something for me personally that i just can't rock with if i talked to a woman and she was like that with a dude that was trying to do something i would have to leave shorty alone Cut that's why i respect yeah. yeah that's why i respect so much my son's mom even though we not together because we deal with each other with respect we don't argue and fuss and fight and call each other names and all that stuff even when it's a it's a small issue or something we disagree on or whatever we talk and each one of us be like oh you know you're right i'm sorry it, it, i didn't mean nothing by that yeah that and, mutual and respect man yeah. mutual respect yeah, is wrong. very underrated because when when you actually have respect for somebody you don't just talk to them any kind of way you don't just say something to try to be petty or to try to piss them off or you know what i'm saying like a lot of the the problematic things that we see on social media are a result of a lack of respect and we mm. see you know a lot of women just don't respect men they just view men as a, a, a just a, a means to get something from um and so fellas i cannot express enough how important it is for you to act seriously vet a woman for you to be careful with who you go raw with and, and, and where, what you do with your seed because there are a lot of things that are out of your control as a man you know what I mean and if you can't have like yo man you, you got one of the best baby mama situations I've ever heard of you know what I'm saying like uh even even husbands and wives you know there are more a lot of disagreements that come up you know when you with regards to the daughter and the wife and the son and like different stuff like that comes up so for y'all to co-parent that great man that that's awesome uh I, I would love to hit to for more people to have that experience because I got a lot of uh partners that are having horror stories yeah me too man me too so hey man i'm great a lot of money it's doing that anyway but <laughs> uh, you yeah. know i'm still grateful just just and i don't i don't care i don't care about that part of it you know what i'm saying we get along great i don't have no issues and that's the way that's the way it should be you know what i'm saying without trying to smash too leave that part out now stop trying to hit and all that and you you'll you'll have you won't have as many problems fellas if you stop trying to have sex with your kid's mom and trying to trying to sneak over and be in her business and all that type of stuff like you have to carry yourself as a respectful man and then nine times out of ten a lot of times the woman will respect you if she don't she just she just not you know she ain't really got no home training or something if she ain't <laughs> respecting a man like that no seriously uh, uh, you know what i'm saying so yeah a lot of guys ignore that though you know um that they they have conversations that you you see her toxic friends and the, the conversations they have and on speakerphone like be careful what you get yourself into these are all the type of things that you should be evaluating you know what i'm saying like every day is some mess and she gotta get oh she gotta post something on social media because it's some mess going on and like mm -hmm. like uh a lot of times when when these videos go up you know it'd be hard to tell if it's a skit or not you know what i'm saying like right, a lot man. of people do a, do a lot of clap chasing uh but in this type of scenario it annoys me when whenever there's a real situation and somebody got to have their camera out like unless it's a exactly. domestic violence and you documenting that i'm you know what i'm saying like this is what's going exactly. on exactly but it, it, i hate it when these people have these conversations and they started off with the camera in the person's face um I, 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 I it'd be hard for me to maintain my composure like that but you know what i do i go to the what comments of those of those videos and see what the women i do saying. too let me see let me see what you do saying, because if i'm let's say if i'm talking to a woman on social media hypothetically and it's mm -hmm. a situation like that that they don't post the video i want to see how she thinking if she comment on that see what she say oh yeah he bogus john he ain't gotta be doing that to them kids <laughs> oh you know what i see where your head at 
I see where your head at. Even though I ain't planning on having no more kids, yeah. still, I don't want your type of mentality around me like that. And that's how you think about me and and about a good dad. Like I go to the comments, bro, and I'll look through to see who it is. You can tell a lot that's in some yep, of the comments absolutely. that I follow. Yeah. yeah. So, and fellas, you you do yourself. A, yep, fellas, you do yourself a disservice if you see comments like that and you just dismiss it. Overlook. You're just happy to get in bed yeah. with her. Mm-hmm. For sure, you got you got to scout it because that's how you know who to follow. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and the smart men, the the guys that I know that use social media, how it's supposed to be done. That's part of who you slide in the DMs on. You know what I mean? Like a woman that posts a, a real respectable or sensible comment. Um, a lot of times they 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 state their profession, they 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 situation that they got going on. Uh, so it's easy to pre-screen a lot of women that you, you know you can you can tell a lot from by, by just judging their comments because uh, I don't think most women even think about that when they post they stuff because it's usually feeling that how the the post or the video made yep. them feel. Um, mm-hmm. But it is what it is, man. Uh, we are up against the clock. Uh, we're about to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we'll be bringing on our special guest for the night. Uh, we'll, our tonight's topic is work to do. We'll be talking about things that we need to do to improve the dating dating culture uh, uh, as a whole uh, and what we need to be doing to have healthier relationships. Uh, you guys are tuned into the Hoda Husband Podcast. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm relationship coach and Arthur Terry Duran, and I am pleased to announce that my book, It's Not That Complicated, is finally available as an audio book. So if you don't like to read or you just don't have time to read a paperback book, this audio book is perfect for you. You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're at work, etc. In the book, I break down how husband material men think and operate in regards to sex, love, and relationships. And I provide real quality insight on how husband material men approach dating. The audio book is available on audible.com and on iTunes. All you have to do is go to one of the websites and search for my name, Terry Duran. Go download your copy today. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Hold of Hoods and Podcast. Uh, we have our special guests on for the night. We, uh, we got Phyla Antoine on. How you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to be here with you guys. Uh, we're glad to have you back. Uh, you're definitely a friend of the show. Uh, before we get get into it, can you let the audience know a little bit about you and your background and what you what you got going on? Absolutely. So my name is Phyla Antoine, and I am an award-winning relationship coach. On a simpler level, I focus on teaching Black women how to heal their emotional trauma so they can have healthy relationships with men. That's what's up. Uh, I, I always like your perspective, so we wanted to bring you on so we could uh, do a deep dive. Uh, tonight's episode is titled Work to Do. Uh, so we just wanted to talk about what needs to be done to just improve the dating culture as a whole. Um, from from what I see, you know, uh, it feels like social media is, is kind of put a chokehold on male and female interactions to where you see the most toxic stuff go viral almost on a day-to-day basis. Uh, what do you think is is the, the biggest tool or the first step to get us in a better space? So I think what you're saying is really powerful because we have to become aware specifically in black and brown communities that there is an agenda at play and there are algorithms that hone in on the most negative aspects of our community to keep us divided. So we have to operate on social media with that level of awareness and we have to be mindful not to contribute to the divisiveness as much as we can. So many of the clients that I work with will come to me and they'll say, well, men are this and men are this and men are this. And when I ask for examples, they give me social media examples. And I have to backtrack and say, but where is this present in your real life? Where in your real Hmm. life are black men being disrespectful to you? Where in your real life is there this big divide? And in most cases, it's not in real life. It's only online. Hmm. So making sure that we are aware of that and then not contributing to that and actually connecting with each other in real life. You know what's crazy? I had a, I I did a live the other day and a young lady was on, young black lady. She was in the comments like, yeah, these here dudes don't, um, they, they want black women to settle 
um because they don't want to spend no money da, da, da. so i said come on come on my live join it so she joined in and then i said so you say black men are this and that and that and this and she said yeah but i don't have that problem black men actually take me out and take me to nice restaurants and do this i said so why are you why are you saying this in the comments and why you come on here talking about this negative aspect of black men when that's not even what you live it's like some of these here rappers that come out here and talk about i remember Nicki minaj talked about um being in the studio with future and she said future future don't even do drugs but he been talking about lean and pills and all this in his in his in his uh music but he don't even do drugs and she felt she felt like that was bad which it which it is because a lot it of kids done got hooked on yes. lean and drugs and died from them. one of them from chicago named juice world because he said he started listening to future right so that's what that's what that sounds like to me like just just the women they getting it from social media a mm -hmm. lot of the things they not living personally even when you talk about submission that was a trigger word and they'll say well i'm not a doormat i don't have to do everything you ever been in a relationship like that well no i haven't so where you getting this from <laughs> why you got a problem with it oh because something <laughs> happened on social media it was a wife that her husband was acting like a dictator so now they take that and run with it and you know social media influences people so much they don't think for themselves and that's prevalent when they say things like that absolutely and i wish i wish i could ride for us right now and say that what you're saying ain't true <laughs> but it's the complete truth and you know on a deeper level one of the things that women will say to each other in private but we will never say in front of men is that oftentimes when we log on to social media it's with an emotional agenda already in play right if i'm really? upset yes if i'm upset wow. if i'm angry and not me personally but i'm talking about generally speaking if a woman mm -hmm. is upset feels unheard feels unvalidated she'll come on social media and look for the pages and the things on her timeline that validate that because we're emotional creatures so we like to exacerbate the emotional experiences that we're having simply to kind of quell the need to feed that emotion it can become like an addiction playing into the negativity and the negative emotions and there are so many women who operate like this on a daily basis but aren't actually conscious of it that's yeah, that's crazy you said it because social media was made to be addictive just like you said if she's going on there she's let's just say she's upset with her with her boyfriend or husband right she can go find whatever she's looking for you put it into that search bar on instagram and you'll find everything everything will come up and then they'll start they'll start putting more on your algorithm there mm -hmm. and you can just have conversations in your real life and the phone is listening so yeah, it's like it's i hear you arguing they hear, hear your conversations yeah <laughs> yeah but look they um and then that's when you get all the quotes it's just me and my kids i ain't doing nothing yeah. for nobody else and you're like <laughs> you're like see dante done messed up again dante <laughs> did something and, 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 and they just they just post it you know they they feelings they be out there like that post they feel it. they go straight to justin laboy's page that's what yeah. they go to, spiritual <laughs> word and, and, so, and go release yep. all their trauma out right there so i know the we're we're a little bit older uh but so for the generation you know i think one of the biggest advantages that we have is that we dated pre-social media you know what i'm saying we had to exchange numbers we had to go to the mall and to the skating rink and things of that nature so our interpersonal skills are exponentially better than the current generation um, that lives through a device. You know, they they don't even walk, ain't even cognizant of what's going on around them in a lot of a lot of uh, situations. Um, how much of a disadvantage do you think that this generation is at since they didn't, they don't know what life is like without social media? So. I'm going to answer this as the mother of an 18 year old and an 11 year old and as a professional who works with the youth in schools they are at a huge disadvantage not just when it comes to intimate relationships but i've never heard so many young women say i don't have a best friend or i don't have a friend group because they're so socially wow. awkward in person wow. right and they it's it's surprising because women, we, we connect, we're yapping, we're talking, all of that. And I hear more and more young women, especially in their early 20s to early 30s, 
30s say, I wish I had a group of women I could talk to, I could hang out with, but I just feel uncomfortable or I feel a lack of confidence because they have not been conditioned to go out in the world like we did and get a little bit of tough skin and experience things. And everything has been through social media or YouTube or group chats. And so if anything bothers you or hurts your feelings, you get to just kind of retreat instead of having to go through it and move through it with other people. And it's unfortunate and it's sad. Um, and I work with them to to alleviate some of those issues. Yeah, you see that in the men too. Look at look at now yeah, they're saying 63% of men under 30 are single and at home watching porn. Mm -hmm. They are they are socially awkward when it comes to talking to women, interacting with women, and just being around a woman. And it's showing in those numbers. Like these hip fools don't know how to talk to no woman without a keyboard. That's right. <laughs> they don't know how to approach a woman and, and get to know her without a phone in their hand. Mm -hmm. So you know it's it's affecting both people i know we talking about the women but it's definitely affecting both people out here the men and the young women so i agree i've never had the amount of sassy comments from men that i get nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> emotions sir. Oh. <laughs> yeah. what's wrong I'm with his emotions <laughs> that's what we want men to do right we want them to be emotionally intelligent Okay. Not just emotional. Okay, okay but what's like distinction. the comment? Right. Yeah, Makes like sense. you could be like well, it depends on the comment, I guess. It, that, that's what it depends on and what they saying. Because I right. see some women right. say that dudes is sassy for <laughs> everything under the sun. Anything. Because, listen, I said I didn't like wigs, and I got called sassy because I said I didn't really? like wigs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that's why when a woman say, "Hey man, they ain't dudes," we can't have preferences. Yeah, like they, they be talking no. sassy. Okay, what 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 did he say that was sassy? Did he did he say, "Hey, two snaps in a circle" or something? <laughs> like, or, or did he just say something you ain't like that he said? You really gotta clarify this. So that's why I'm asking. You know what I'm saying? What was said because you used the word sassy? That's all. That's no all problem. Cool. And I can clarify. Yeah, I mean specifically when there are like personal attacks. Right. Oh, okay. I'm, oh, okay. From my generation, from where I come from, I'm used to men being able to control their emotional outbursts because you had to kind of stand on your square to make sure that you were safe and things were operating a certain way. And like you said, so many men are not out in the real world anymore. Mm -hmm. These young men, they're at home on video games and watching porn. And so when it comes to simply having a conversation, there are these personal attacks there are these outbursts and things like that, right? Like, for example, I had one guy say to me um, that I was probably a bitter baby mama and I would never be married. But in all my videos, wow. it's a picture yeah. of my husband and I right behind me. If you just pay attention, you could see that. And I wear this big old ring on my finger. So it's no missing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a result of social that. media, though. Social, social media yeah. is toxic because they can hide behind the keyboard. Like, they say a lot of stuff in the comments that they would never say to you in real life. Absolutely. Everybody's tough, and I pull up, and all this and that. Like, I mean, a lot of these people probably never even been in a real fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, so <laughs> uh, so social media gasses a lot of people up to, to think that they're more than they actually are. Especially um, them threes. I wanted to kind of shift gears a little bit um, and talk about the, the mind state of, you know, this current dating pool. Uh, historically, you know, the whole purpose of marriage and family and everything was to pool your resources to, to increase the, the, you know, quality of life for the whole, you know, for everybody. We're all going to make sacrifices and pool our, you know, to, to make life better. It, it seems like we have an epidemic of selfishness where people are reluctant to share and try to try to work towards those common goals. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's an excellent question um, with a lot of caveats in it, right? So first, mm -hmm. I believe that selfishness is beneficial when you are initially stepping out into the world and in the dating space. Mm -hmm. And not from a negative perspective, but just from self-centering and you centering your needs as a man, I'm centering my needs as a woman. And then when we come together, we have the conversation and do the dance of 
where we're going to compromise. So in that respect, it's okay, but you have to know when to kind of relinquish some of that. Marriage is institutional. It should be strategic and it's a business, right? One of the reasons why the black community is in the disarray that it's in, excuse me, is because we don't have the stability within marriage and families that other communities have. And it's by design. Mm -hmm. It's by design. Mm -hmm. It's been done on purpose. But we're at a point in our era, in our evolution, where we have to be smarter than those who have outsmarted us in the past. And one of the things that I am adamant about when I'm talking to women about relationships is that you cannot be emotional about relationships. You cannot be emotional about dating. You can become emotional when we're at a love stage, but you can't let your emotions trick you out of your prize, which is being married, being in a committed relationship, starting a family, improving your communities and us progressing collectively. And I think the problem is that women have these fantasies in their heads. And when they meet men, I think you all know how we operate. So you generally will feed the fantasy and women will immediately open up because she already sees the three kids, the house, the white picket fence because she's so emotional instead of being strategic and trying to find a partner that she can actually grow with. She just wants someone who's going to feed her fantasy and make her feel good. Yeah, and that's a lot to do with social media too because social media puts a fantasy in their face every day. It's you about all media. Chicks. Yeah, you got these hit chicks getting, um, you know, three dozen roses on Valentine's Day. They getting Bentleys. They getting this. And then you got... 50,000 women in the comments. See, this is why I won't settle. Oh, what? <laughs> what do you mean? You ain't getting no Bentley, yeah. sweetheart. All y'all not getting this, but they feel like, and that's why I like I to deserve say, it. Yeah, that's why I like to say yeah. that the average man out here is in trouble. And that's and that's clear. Like I said, in the, in the stats of single dudes and virginity has risen in men. The average guy out here is in trouble because the average woman don't want them no more. Mm. They used to, but the but the the fantasy that uh, social media and movies and TVs and and these different things have created for women being in a feeling so much and feeling like I deserve this too. I deserve what I'm seeing on TV. I deserve mm. what I'm seeing on social media, and therefore any man that can't give that to me is not worth my time. Yeah, and they and don't I, realize that yeah. most of them can't can't get those types of men that they want that they that can provide the type of lifestyle that they see in on tv the vast majority of women can't get that type of man but they will x out all the other men that are actually quality dudes and it's causing the divide that way too but even the ones that do have a man a lot of them (laughs) since since they're attractive and they get have access to so many men they even though they'll view a quality man or husband material man as disposable how many women do we see yeah. that I left my husband because I just wanted more? I just more, felt like yeah. I deserved more because yep. I got a better job. A or or like a lot of the silly reasons that they leave a dude and then they end up with a, a dude that got more money, but he got 10 holes on the side. You know what I'm saying? Like that he got all these other issues that yeah, they, they even get that dude. Right. So, so so I was gonna say a lot. That's it. That's it. In the best case scenario, a lot of times that they end up just being single for an extended period of time. Um, so Oh man, it it, it just feel like it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's like a, a very hard ceiling, you know, like a diamond encrusted ceiling on um the dating world these days. But yeah, and you know that's why I try to get you know women on my page, and not just the women, and, and I try to and I try to make the example of it because a lot of women nowadays, because they making money and things like that, you hear a lot of them say, "I don't need a man." I hear that all the time. I don't need no man. What I need a man for? And I try to get I try to get women to understand that it, 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 we need each other. Absolutely. It's not just a woman sure. need a man. So you know, I often get asked, "Do you need a woman?" Yes, I would like mm-hmm. to get married one day. Mm-hmm. What the heck else am I gonna do? Yes, I need a woman. I mm-hmm. I need companionship. I need that love and affection and somebody to take care of the home that I would like to do. And I take care of her. Like, yes, I need a woman to let them know it's okay. It's all right to say that you need somebody because Mm -hmm. when you come out here and you say you don't need nobody, but you're looking for somebody to do something for you, 
most men are gonna be like, what am I gonna provide for you for? You telling me you don't need me. So why would I do anything for you? That's the way I look at it. So a lot of those women to me, uh, they, they X themselves out right away. Mm -hmm. So the attitudes that's out here is is hurting a lot of the women um, out here in the dating world. And I think that's what we hear a lot on social media. But I'll tell you from my professional experience, that's not really how women feel. Right. A lot Ooh. of the things that women say are to present a certain way to other women. Uh -huh. Right. Cap Capping on the ground. Yeah. And we're yeah. we're wired Depressing and we're socialized to compete against each other. Yeah. Right. So we have conversations yeah. about men to other women simply to be elevated in those groups of women. But behind closed doors, I don't care how much money I have clients who are millionaires, who are in the medical field, who are entrepreneurs. And no matter how much money they make, no matter how successful they are, they want a man to come in and relieve some of their load. Even the women who make millions of dollars that I work with just want a man to get the Amazon boxes out the driveway, just want a man to take the garbage out. They just want to feel supported. And until we start having open conversations as women and being transparent about things, this kind of capping on social media is going to continue. Well, you shouldn't say it because because when you come out here the things that come out your mouth words have power and Absolutely. to me when i hear a woman say i don't need a man need means essentially important mm -hmm. one of them it means i view it as essentially important if you won't view me like that i ain't got no and i don't have no space for you to just want me is just to possess me it's the desire to possess when you don't want to possess it no more you get rid of it and you get another one mm -hmm. so when you out here with that attitude and this is what you're saying i don't care what you think behind closed doors it, what you think behind closed doors should be what comes out your mouth out in the open because when it don't come out your mouth in the open somebody like me and other men in my position gonna say why would i risk anything with a woman like that mm. why yeah okay. because, a lot because of yeah, you know, no, real quick, because because you saying you don't need me. So the minute that you don't want me anymore, I'm out the door, but you gonna want some of what I'm out the door with in nine times out of ten. And I don't want to be bothered with no woman like that. So you, you should tell them, don't go out here saying stuff like this. Because me and I watching smart men are paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and a, a lot of the uh, uh, the issues that a guy or guys the foresight that guys see with those type of boss chicks and women that make make all that type of money uh, is is it'll be very difficult to to compromise with her um, mm -hmm. because a lot of those women throw their accolades and their money. You, well, you I can you know like anytime there's a conflict you can't tell them no any decisions they make oh well, you can't afford I can afford it I don't need your permission and so it becomes a uh, I guess a indirect disrespectful kind of situation because um, we see that how many lots of women admit that once they become the breadwinner i can't respect no man if i make more than him and all these type of attitudes so th that seems it was shocking to hear you say that these women behind closed doors claim that they want a man but they eliminate most men when they actually make good money and, and, and have salaries like that they don't view the, the men that, that are in their communities as dateable in a lot of cases. You know what I think is important for me to say, right? Because oftentimes women who are successful, and I'm talking specifically about black and brown women, right? Because that's who I work with. Yeah. Oftentimes when our women are successful and accomplished and they have so many achievements, their desire to be successful comes from their own level of trauma. So it's usually, right i don't want to live in poverty so i'm gonna work my way out of this i don't want to be the single mother that i saw my mother be so i'm gonna work my way out of this i've learned that i can't depend on a man because my father wasn't in the home so i'm working my way out of this so they are achieving amazing accolades but none of it is coming from a place of joy or appreciation or the types of emotions that would allow you to let a man into your life all of it is coming from this like fear and lack. So when a man does come into their life, most of the time they're micro man managing him the same way they would their own life and all the things that they've been doing. And so instead of relating to him as a human, 
who is here in partnership with me, it's like, here's just another thing I've checked off of my to-do list. He's here and I need you to stay on the left so that you don't interfere or interrupt. But it's because they are dealing with a heavy level of emotional trauma and they're overcompensating because most women are simply afraid to be hurt. Hey, well, they need to go talk to yeah. somebody on the couch somewhere because I ain't going to deal with them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Damn. I don't want to no be, be bothered with that. No, none from me. <laughs> I'm out here. I'm out here in the dating world. I'm trying to I'm trying to find me somebody I can spend the rest of my life with. I ain't got time to hold hands with no 37 year old woman that ain't been to therapy. And she got a bad attitude because mm -hmm. because of her old relationships or how she grew up. Sweetheart, I'm sorry it happened to you, but I don't have I don't have the patience to deal with you to try to get you out of masculinity because you you're afraid to be feminine and 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 trust the man and put your and put your support and and your submission to a man because of your stuff. I, hey. That ain't gonna be my problem because I'm gonna lose hair hmm. trying to get you, trying to get you out of your masculinity and make you be feminine by by overdoing things. Absolutely more not. Now I work. waste now I worse I now I waste two or three more years with somebody and it don't work out no way because she's masculine. No, thank you. Give me a give me a feminine woman from the get go that ain't got no problem being submissive that wants to cater to a man and be under the leadership and follow a man. Give me that from the beginning. Not a woman I gotta I gotta wrestle with and play therapist with because I'm not a therapist. So no, I don't. I, I have I have some sympathy for you, but outside of that, I'm not gonna deal with you. I'm sorry. You yeah, women need to understand at, that at her house, not in your yes. house. Not in my house because you want to know why. If a dude came to a woman and said, "You know, I'm a little, oh, I'm overly feminine because my dad wasn't in the home and my mom is the only one who raised me," but if you if you work with me and you can get me out of my femininity and into my masculinity, how many women you think gonna do that? But how that's many? not what overly feminine men do. Overly but, feminine but, but, men but, but, are the one who are physically abusive, psychologically manipulative, pathological liars. So women are experiencing that too. I, and I think that you're talking about the polar opposites, the extremes. But no. in the middle of this, we each have to help our partner grow. They need to be willing, but we also have to have a willingness to be open to help each other heal, resolve, and grow. That's the only way that we're going to be able to reconnect in a healthy way. No, you go heal on somebody's couch. Don't try to heal over here. I didn't hurt you. I didn't hurt you. I didn't cause this pain for yeah. you to come over here now and ask me to heal you. I'm not a therapist. It's not. It's not my Dude job to heal you. Time, and we huh? talking. Yeah, we talking about. We talking about dating. We talking. Yeah, about not dating. even a committed relationship. Yes, we talking about dating. I mm -hmm. meet you and you hurt. You have issues. You got trust issues. You can't. You can't submit to a man. No, ma'am. No, thank you. You. You know you got problems. Mm -hmm. Women they got bad attitudes out here. They. 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 They go pay for classes to learn how to give head. They go pay for classes to learn how to pole dance and, and ride dick. Why can't you pay for a therapist? Because to get through these here issues that you got. You can, you can pay for that. You can pay for femininity. Oh, man. You can, but my point, violence, bro. Go in. Yeah, for real. My point is, you can, you can pay it for sounds femininity. sounds a little personal. No, it's not. It's not. You know what it is? It's real. It's real because I'm not a therapist. You can pay mm -hmm. for therapy. You could pay. You could pay for femininity courses also. So Absolutely. no, don't ask me to be your therapist and help you heal. Go heal on your own. Because I didn't. I agree. I agree. We all have a responsibility, yeah. and accountability is important. But empathy and compassion comes into play as well. So I should know if I'm not ready and I have trust issues, I shouldn't be dating because I shouldn't be putting this on the man, right? But if we get to the point where we're in a relationship, it's your responsibility to do your work heal whatever issues you have and my responsibility to do mine. And then we can come together and maybe converse about that. Talk about the ways that we're working on ourselves and see how that helps our relationship. But that's in the relationship phase, not on date one, two or three. Yeah, I think that um, the problem with that is, is most of the dating situations that happen, happen to spur the moment. You was at somewhere and y'all saw each other and you changed numbers and then you know, the sexual attraction and all that comes into play. Um, so even if somebody is hurt, most people that are, at, you know, realize they got an issue, they meet somebody that they really like, they got a good job, they they not going, they going to view it as, I may never have the opportunity again. Uh, and so I think 
like like she said some you got to have some type of compassion or uh willingness or room for growth as the uh which which <laughs> strict policy <laughs> no that ain't it though not, not no no i'm saying like it's okay like <laughs> to be like to have room for growth with certain things that ain't what i'm saying like absolutely no you can't be like i'm talking about i'm talking about like you come into a relationship and you have major things trust issues you don't want to be submissive to a man you don't you don't say you don't need a man and you don't uh, uh operate femininely you want me to get you out of that i'm not doing it maybe if you got some you know a little pride for a little stubborn sure I work with you on the stubbornness and things like that, but not them major issues. I'm not doing it. I got it. I got it. That is fair. That is fair. All right. Well, man, this was a really good conversation. Looks like we are up against the clock. Uh, Before we get out of here, Fala, can you let everybody know where they can find you and where they can get your content? Absolutely. I am at she is Fila, S-H-E-I-S-F-I-L-A across all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. And you can find out about my programs or just deeper information on my website at phylaantwine.com. Uh, well, I want to thank you again for coming on the podcast. I always enjoy having a conversation with you. Um, and I'm pretty sure our audience will learn a lot from, from this conversation in particular. Uh, but before we go, man, I want to give another shout out to my man, Brother Soul Productions, for keeping us laced with our background music. Uh, I want to thank JSD, man, for linking up so we can get this episode knocked out. Uh, and again, Father, we really enjoy the conversation and I look forward to having you on again. Always um, a pleasure. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Hold a Husband podcast. Y'all, thanks for tuning in. Peace. Peace.